my friends hello to all of you as you've seen all of you that uh, subscribe to this channel and all of you that uh, were so close to me and you carry on being close to me I didn't manage to post as much lately as so tired with uh, this new life that I have with this job pray always for me guys I need your support in your prayers always think about me and my family even this upcoming week is going to be a challenging week many things will happen maybe even changing of the place where we live many things will happen so uh, carrying me in your prayers that God will give me wisdom and strength so I'll be exactly what I need to be a good Christian husband, a good father, someone that takes good decisions. Life is a battle for all of us, for sure. And we experience that on a regular basis. And those that deny the veridicity of the fact that life is a battle most probably live in a parallel reality. Now I have my chance to share with you something that we all love, something that uh, attracted you. <laughs> That's why you came on this channel and then we discovered You discovered me, I discovered what a wonderful people you are I have many names here to mention uh, But uh, if God forbid I forget one person Then well, I, I, maybe the rest will become upset I want to make a, a video in which I will thank everyone That was and carry on to be so close to me. Thank you. But now let's share a video that I found with Jonathan. On this occasion I want to advertise the channel. The channel is called um, Kingdom Story Kingdom Story Company. So, as I said, this channel is called Kingdom Story Company. Take a look. Kingdom Story Company, it has 8.67k subscribers. It's a great channel. And uh, I'm going to post on this, on my own channel, not all the interview, which is not all this uh, intervention of Jonathan as he was invited and uh, he graciously talked to them obviously about Jesus and season 4 and all those moments in which uh, Jonathan was touched uh, being a part of this project doing what he does uh, impacts him first and foremost and then all of us so um, I'm gonna post half of the interview here on my channel and the rest you can see it going to this channel, Kingdom Story Company, they deserve all this credit, thank you so much guys, as I'm, uh, I'm using this interview, not all of it, just half of it, so for seeing all of it, just by all means go and visit this channel, Kingdom Story Company, and uh, subscribe, as I have subscribed as well, and I'm uh, happy now to follow uh, whatever they will post uh, and uh, my goodness me, beautiful videos they speak about uh, one of my favorite movies I can only imagine uh, a movie that touched my heart <laughs> filled my eyes with tears and brought me joy as well by all means, check them out, they deserve it. But uh, now, let's take a look at the half of this interview. And the half of it, you know where to go. Kingdom Story Company. Three, two, one. Let's go. Uh, you know Jonathan Rumi a little bit, don't you? I do. Jonathan, how are you today? Just a wee bit. Hey, guys. Hey, Kevin. How are you, Pastor? How are you? <laughs> Good to we're, be here. We are great. Jonathan Rumi, in case you have been living under a rock, uh, <laughs> has, has played the role 
He's from New York City. Uh, he graduated uh, with a degree in filmmaking, went to L.A. Uh, for some time, started acting there, has been in numerous different shows. But of course, he's best known and is probably brought so many of us closer to Jesus because of your great portrayal of Jesus. I, I can't tell you, Jonathan, what an honor it is to meet you, but I know you're going to downplay all that. But thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the sense of humor that you bring to Jesus. I think you mm -hmm. have. You have nailed that so well. And just the camaraderie and the ins and outs. Talk to us a little bit about what that's been like playing that role. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's always an honor to, to be amongst friends here and, and um, yeah, and colleagues, uh, Kevin. Um, it's, yeah, it's been an amazing journey for me. Uh, I, I can't take complete credit for the humor part of the de uh, depiction. We have great writers and mm -hmm. the whole goal was to, I think, uh, you know, make Jesus accessible to so many people by um, portraying the, the completeness, the fullness of his humanity, um, which of course includes everything from humor to sadness, to joy, to frustration. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, one, of, one of my favorite aspects of playing him, playing him is actually getting to, to dig into the humor. Um, as an actor, I, I, I love comedy. I've done a bit of comedy for, for many years. And um, getting to see that side of Jesus is just so kind of unexpected from what we're used to. So uh, it, to me, any chance I get to, to, to dip my toes into the, uh, the comedic waters with, with this character in, in a reverent way, of course, um, you know, it's just a, it's, a, it's a delightful day for me. Well, what a gift and what a joy uh, it is to have so many, we've talked about this, Jonathan, to have so many mm -hmm. options now of, of stories uh, that we mm -hmm. have access to. Of course, your portrayal of Lonnie and Jesus Revolution was yes. one that many will remember quite, quite significantly. But yeah. I love the fact, I mean, you look at the month of February and The Chosen is in theaters like the entire Ooh. month, which like it's, yeah. it's, it's a Jonathan <laughs> love fest and I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> and, uh, and so people should check it out in theaters because like this has been the dream for us to be able to have content that literally affirms our values and, and mm -hmm. what our faith is uh, for us to be able to access and to be able to bring family and our community to and here we're living it so um uh, let's go support the chosen in theaters and then obviously ordinary angels coming out at the end of this month at february 23rd exciting oh, oh, look at that. oh. I'm getting up look at that. The devil. <laughs> no one alan richson everybody how are you guys doing Hey, Alan. This, this is awesome. Very much. Uh, Reacher meets the teacher. This is right. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Jesus, and we've got we've got Reacher, better known as Ed Schmidt in Ordinary Angels. You know, Kingdom Story had some rhyme and reason to all this, if you think about it, because Jesus Revolution came out a year ago, and I mean, February, in your yeah. face, in your face, Jesus Christ, and. Uh, if you choose to go to that movie, you're saying something just by buying the ticket. Mm -hmm. And now Kingdom Story comes back with this front door uh, opening where you get an opportunity to come a little bit closer to Jesus, test the waters, uh, so to speak, kind of like the chosen testing the waters, so swimming against the current. But there's a lot of people who are going to come to see Ordinary Angels, Alan, and see you because Ooh. they've watched Reacher and in so many different things. Thank you for joining us. You have uh, a, a lot of gifts that you're using for the Lord. What are you most excited about Ordinary Angels? Oh, well, you know, I, uh, I think like you guys were mentioning, I mean, just to be a part of a movement right now that feels pretty serendipitous, um, mm. where you've got a lot of wholesome content coming out, you know, I think it's a, it's a fun moment to be a part of, you know. Mm. Um, so it feels to me like it's, you know, this is part of a bigger conversation right now than just Ordinary Angels itself, as exciting as that movie is to share with everybody. And you filmed it, I know, up in a very cold part of, of Canada. That's right. Which part of Canada is warm? That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's all snow, all year, all year round. When you talk about ordinary angels to people, for uh, you know, thousands of people who have not seen that, who are on this call right now, what comes to your mind? How do you describe, how do you put it in a nutshell, playing Ed Schmidt? How do you say in a summary form, this is what Ordinary Angels is all about. That's a great question. Here's what it is to me. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, many people are, are probably meeting me in this moment right now um, uh, on this call. And uh, for those that don't know, you know, I, I dedicate um, 
my platform, the gifts that I've been given, every my resources once a week um, to ideas that I, I think are bigger than myself that um, you know I share in my faith. So I do this thing called Insta Church on Sundays, <clears throat> and sharing in my faith in that way is been important but what i get back is really interesting because i hear not just from it this is not being broadcast to a faith-based community this is being broadcast to a couple million followers that are on all areas of the spectrum and the without a doubt the biggest question that i get back has to do with the problem of pain which is something that we've explored in you know and and been confronted with uh, you know, C.S. Lewis says this is really the big, the 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 big problem to confront, um, and you know, atheists have everything else to deal with. You know, but uh, uh, the problem of pain is really what this film tackles, and to take an authentic look at uh, the fact that we really do deal with um, horrible issues on this side of heaven, um, like you know, you know, kids getting sick. Um, it seems unfair, um, but this is a part of our reality in this fallen world. So. It's it's a it's something that we we have to confront, and, and this movie does so beautifully. Um, and I'm I'm really proud to be a part of that um, conversation in particular. Jonathan, speak to inspirational films and what you've seen from Jesus Revolution, uh, the uh, the recoil that you've had from people coming up and talking to you from that. And I know it also opened a lot of doors with the chosen of people just saying, Hey, uh, I've watched you on this. You've helped me understand a Jesus that was very different than what he was portrayed as I, I heard from my traditional church or maybe their, their own understanding of Jesus in their early years. Yeah. You know, I think, I think what um, for me, the, the chosen has helped um, kind of ignite is this, opportunity for for filmmakers from other walks um of of life and and even other realms of faith to say like hey you can do these kinds of stories in a way that doesn't feel preachy it doesn't feel um you know uh, completely um uh, uh you know uh, boring or um just some kind of caricature of of these characters that that uh you know people are rolling their eyes half you know 10 minutes into the film um that they can be done with a level of, of quality and i think um I, I think as an artist who believes in in trying to to attach themselves to projects that um you know speak to to a level of professionalism and quality like for me it doesn't matter what the project is whether it's you know from a so-called secular um generated uh, company or if it's like more in the faith realms like at the end of the day it has to be a good story well told you know the screenwriting guru robert mckee one of the 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 um the most salient points i got out of studying with him is like a good story well told is what draws audiences is what actually takes storytelling and sort of transcends you know the, the medium itself and leaves a lasting impression people walk away from it they're thinking about the story days later because it had an impact why did it have an impact because you you got all the points right you got the, the starts with a great script actors production values everything can be done well and for some reason over the last 20 30 years like christian filmmaking or filmmaking that had a christian you know um viewpoint all of a sudden fell into this thing where it's like, well, we don't necessarily need a great script. Well, maybe the acting doesn't have to be that great. Well, maybe the, maybe we can throw a bunch of platitudes in these characters' mouths and, you know, we hit these, you know, if we say Jesus 37 times in this movie, we'll have our audience, we'll, 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 we'll convert people, we'll convert their hearts. And it doesn't work like that. Um, it, in fact, it alienates people more than anything else. So between the chosen getting to do Jesus revolution, um, ordinary angels, you've got, great stories, great production values, great actors, great writing, and people see their own values reflected in the stories that are being told. So I, I think, I mean, I think it's a, a sort of a, a cinematic revival that is uh, in tandem and in concert with a spiritual revival that is happening around the world. You know, Alan, you, I'm going to jump to you because you've been very gracious with your time. You're on set right now. I know you've got to hop back. I'm going to, I'm going to throw one more question to you and then I'm going to pray for you, my Thank brother. You so but, uh, I, I love following you on Instagram and I love your Insta church. And as I listen to you sometimes, I'm always amazed at how, how you can just talk right from your heart and off the top of your head on theological issues. So you talked about pain. Pain is a big portion of the story when you play Ed Schmidt and Ordinary Angels. And that is the great equalizer because, you know, God never wastes a hurt 
all the things that we go through, there's going to be something good that can come out of it, according to Romans 8, 28. When you think about the witness that you're having in, in Hollywood and the non-Christians who are following you right and left, uh, what are some of the thoughts that you have as you're trying to take them one step closer in a journey with Jesus and, and investigating Christianity? Help us go into your mind to understand what goes through your thought process as you see yourself being that witness for Christ. Oh, man. Well, first of all, let me, you know, let me just start by saying, you know, for, for anybody wanting to endeavor in something like that, it, you know, it doesn't matter how deep my convictions are. It's never not a little terrifying. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to step out as, as, as deep as my relationship is with Christ, as much as I want to image him, it is uh, never easy to have that conversation publicly. Um, but uh, I'm able to do it because uh, it's practical and it's reasonable to uh, abide by the tenets that God wants us to live by. When we are in a deep relationship with, with Christ, uh, we'll find our best life, our best life, our best, um, we'll be our most vibrant, our most attractive persons um, when we're living that way. And um, I think it's a misnomer that we're, you know, um, that 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 if we're truly in relationship that it'll create um something in us that is uh an unwanted outlier in society you know i think if there's something violent or vehement or laughable about who we are i think we should call into question our um our, our understanding of what christ is calling us to um rather than uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the true call, the way that, that Christ, uh, the architecture that he created and things like the Sermon on the Mount. So all that to say in an over, overly complicated way, it, it is an unquestionable path towards peace and prosperity, I think, to adhere to the, to, you know, to the call that Christ puts in our life. Um, and when you, you know, without a doubt understand that, because of the unique journey I've had, um, uh, it, it makes it easy to, to, you know, to hold on to that conviction. I, I remember just a quick story, an anecdote. I, there was a, a I came from, a, I came from a small town called Niceville in Florida. And it weirdly, it's, it produced a lot of talent that has gone out into the world and done really big things. And one guy um, uh, was an exceptional radio talent. Um, and so he's, he's in radio and uh, he's, he's a writer an author and he has a degree in writing from UCLA. Um, so he, he found his way out to LA. And when I started to break in the industry, he reached out and kind of filled me in on what he was doing. And I had started to write as well because I didn't just want to be on the, you know, the last link in the creative chain as an actor. And I mentioned to him, cause he was in school, um, that I found it really hard to pitch an idea, you know? And he quickly, without, without wavering, he said, uh, if you can't pitch, it's because you lack confidence. You don't know what you're writing about. And I was like, whoa, that came quick. And it was sobering because I was like, oh, I'm an experienced uh, you know, filmmaker at this point. I know what I'm doing. It was humbling. And he was right. When I go pitch an idea now, I, I, have, I have all the confidence in the world because I have mastered that subject. I know the topic that we're talking about. And I can talk to anybody about it. And the same thing is true for faith. If it's hard for you to talk about, if you if you aren't sure how to share your conviction in this, I think it's because maybe there's a little something missing. We have more work to do, you know, um, uh, and and so that's really what it's been. So I, I came to, to this this point in my journey where I kind of had it all: a lot of material wealth and um, you know houses and cars and all the things that we go like this is success and. Uh, chasing some empire like that, some human empire was not, not only exhausting, but it was, <clears throat> it was damaging to my physical health, my mental health. It was not the way. <clears throat> and having had a taste of that and realizing how empty it is made it super easy to go, what is the way? And then you find these, you know, these, these ideas um, that you can have confidence in because I've tasted the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've, I've been very lucky uh, that I've had that experience in that part of my journey. I hope everybody does at some point. Um, arrive at the point where they go, you know what? It does make the most sense. It is the most reasonable way to live if you want to be your best self. Um, and that's that's where it is for me. So it's easy to share these ideas. Mm. Well, it oozes um, out of you quite naturally. And um, oh, I, I, 
I, I appreciate your your witness. I want to pray for you, and then we're gonna we're gonna let you go. We're gonna kick you out so you can Thank get, you. Back <laughs> get back to work. Get back to work. Thank you. I, I appreciate the prayers too. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray. I look forward to arm wrestling you in in New York City at the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> let me, let me pray for you. Father, we, we we lift up our brother. We thank you for the way you're using Alan in incredible ways. I thank you, Lord, that he has a personal walk with you and that he doesn't he doesn't back away from that. And I think of the chosen and the fish that swims the opposite direction and goes against the green. And I thank you for a, a man like this. I pray blessings on his wife, Kat. I know they're apart right now while he's uh, he's filming. I pray for his three sons. I thank you for the father that he is to them. Uh, I thank you that we see Jesus in him. I pray you'll bless uh, ordinary angels and the great work that he did in that and, and be with him right now while he's on set and continue to use him and multiply his ministry. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, powerful stuff. I'll take that. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me crash the party for just a little bit, guys. Alan, um, I love you, buddy. You're going to see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. I can see you all. Congrats, yeah. brother. See ya. Jonathan, we're going to jump back to you. You're very gracious to allow people to pop oh, in. Oh, I know. I know. It's I came as ordinary with angels. Things. Just, yes. Yes. He's. Uh, yeah. You too would be kindred spirit, obviously. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the chosen because I saw it last last week. Uh, I was there the, the opening night, and uh, it's it's riveting work that you do. Um, Thank you. Talk to us a little bit about how taxing it is when. I remember the Sermon on the Mount. I remember some of those things where you've got to be on in all those moments and you're trying to channel is not the word that sounds so new age, but you're mm -hmm. really trying to stay in touch with the spirit and just, you know, let let the Lord speak through you and and, and try to put yourself in in a physical realm of of what divine would be, divinity would be. So what is that like? And and tell us how it is that, that you found some some tips and some ways that, that help that come together? Um, yeah, th thanks for that question. That's a that's a good one. Um, you know, everything for me starts and ends with prayer. And uh, before before I do any before any season before any scene within a season, I'm constantly praying to. Uh, to sort of reflect, I guess, God's spirit to to um, to the audience watching, and uh, I think as long as I stay grounded in my faith, there's so much that's that's taken out of my hands that I don't have to worry about, that I don't have control over. So, um, what I can contribute um, personally is is the experience of humanity of, of what it's like to live in this world and to to you know to to suffer to sweat to to cry to laugh all those things and i just you know i try to imagine what jesus's experience of humanity could have been like and so i i think there's there's only so much that i'm responsible for and uh i i've become especially cognizant of that in the last few few seasons you know um i can't i can't uh pretend to know what god's divinity is like uh, no one can so i don't try this you know I, I think that's that's the stuff that he that he takes care of in the process of the portrayal that that i don't have control over so you know i i stick with what i know <laughs> if that makes sense jonathan i i just wanted to um lift you up because our time together during jesus revolution what i realized about you is i don't know if i've ever met a more soft and gentle spirit and mm. and how you portray jesus in the chosen is like it, it's it, it's who you are like i can't help but think that god specifically his timing was so perfect in <laughs> having that show lay out and mm. and just the right time when when you, and you've shared this part of your story when you were at the bottom in your mind and god lifted you up because he had this time this moment perfectly designed for you and and you just showed a, a bit of your soft side and it's real and so when people watch you in the chosen it's like man this you have that of who christ is it's so real and and i just appreciate that 
um, part of who you are because it's not easy as people. Um, we're, you know, it's very easy to get um, uh, very quick to anger and and quick to speak, and we just don't we don't slow down. And you're so good at it. And so thank, thank you, you Thanks, for, for who you are. I just want to really lift you up and appreciate you. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah, it's not a it's not an easy. I'm beautiful, and I hope uh, you have now the appetite to watch all of it. Do not limit yourself to only what you've seen on this channel. Go to the original channel <laughs> to go there to, to where this video was uh, posted. It was live, and I've seen that there were lots of people that came, and they were happy to see Jonathan. and. Um, so happy to see all of them let's help this channel grow this channel is bigger than mine but I'll do my best to advertise them and tell everyone support Kingdom Story Company because it's a, a YouTube channel of a Christian movie company that produces entertainment that uh, is not just entertainment it changes lives products, movies that we all love to watch in the end, isn't it? But if you watch something that makes a difference, if you watch something that at the end you, you take essentials for your life, something that will touch you deeply, then uh, you will gain instead of watching and filling your heart with emptiness like what? Hollywood is offering. What is Kingdom Studio in the end? A new entertainment content company that partnerships with Lionsgate. Lionsgate saw potential, so obviously they jump into it and they help Kingdom Studio to outreach people with their awesome stories. If you haven't seen, I can only imagine. I recommend this movie to you with all my heart. So the music that you hear in the background it's the same David Lastra. Wonderful music indeed. And David sings not with his voice, with his heart. Just listen. David Lastra, his channel is Deep Instrumental Worship. Visit him as well. And you know what to do subscribe and if you can make a donation to help him carry on why not just you take a look and see the amount of music that he has produced already it's uh, outstanding he deserves our support thank you again for watching guys I really appreciate you and forgive me for not being able to post as much anymore like what I used to do things are changing fast pace. Life is different now. No more free time on my hands as I used to. Love you and thank you for staying close to me.